Hey, what's up, everybody? I hope you got a few minutes to hang out with me. I'm in the Bible, and I'm in Daniel chapter 3. This is good stuff. Uh, we're standing tall for God. Let's go. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And I looked up those cubit measurements, and it came out to be like a 90 foot tall by 9 foot wide gold statue is what the king put up there. He then summoned the satraps, the prefects, the governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So all the people that he summoned um, assembled for the dedication of the, of the image that the king had set up, this golden statue. They all come and they stood before it. So all, as all these people are standing around it, they're waiting, the herald loudly proclaimed nations and peoples of every language. This is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So the king's telling them, hey, once you hear the music from these instruments and all kinds of music, you're to bow down and worship this statue of gold. And those who don't will be thrown into a blazing furnace to death. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshiped the image of gold that the king, Nebuchadnezzar, had set up. So they did what they were told. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. Uh oh, we got some tattletales on the on the scene. Your Majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship that image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into the blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you've set up. So furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, if you're ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue from my hand? So he's giving them one last chance. He's like, I'm telling you, do this. When you hear this, and I'll save you, it's all good. If you don't, you're going in the furnace. And this is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's response to him. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, and I feel like this is they put that in there on purpose. These men were just wearing their everyday ordinary clothes they had nothing special on their bodies and the king's command was so, so thrown into the blazing furnace the king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and these three men firmly tied fell into the blazing furnace so that fire was so hot it killed the, the soldiers that were ordered to take the, these men to their death in the furnace uh, the king Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Hey, uh, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into that fire? And they replied, Certainly, your majesty. 
he said, look, I see four men walking around in that fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Man, they didn't even smell like fire. <laughs> Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any other god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. I love this. Man, they were standing tall for God and the faith of these men. I just, we need faith like these three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They stood in their faith for God, facing death even. I, I think that's amazing. And like we face situations all the time daily and we get tempted and to do things the wrong way or the old ways or and sometimes there's consequences for not going along with the crowd just like this story like they didn't go with the flow and they faced death for it that's and we still but when we stand up for what's right and we refuse to go along with the crowd we might suffer some persecution but as we stand firm god rewards us protects us and i love it because the faith these men had but not they risked their lives in order they risked their lives like that blows my mind in order to obey what they know god's will was i love that and to them to die was better than to live with the guilt and shame of disobeying god that's powerful. Their faith was so strong. They said, I'd rather die than disobey God. And I sit there and I think, and I'm like, what if these men didn't show this kind of faith? You know, what if they didn't show that? Then, like, Nebuchadnezzar, and it wasn't just the king that saw this happen. It was other high officials and governors and advisors and treasurers. They all saw this happen. And so if they didn't stand up and show the faith that the king and his advisors never would have saw the power of God. They never would have got to see it. And they, we wouldn't have seen that change from, you need to worship this gold statue to now, hey, we need to worship uh, these men's God because their God is, they came and saved them with their faith, through their faith. And I love it. Because even if, uh, I love how they said this too, is like, even if God doesn't save us in this certain situation right now we're not going to lose our faith in god we're going to keep our faith in god we're not going to worship anything else other than our god let's have that faith today i love you god loves y'all more have a blessed day